Warning, this is a Sydney outlet and contains my opinion, and my opinion only. No media from any of the shows, things that I rant, games, TV shows, and things of that nature are being used in this rant. And this rant is uncensored. Hide the kitties, put them to bed, do something constructive with them, like actually being a parent. Don't let them watch this rant. Okay? Other than that, enjoy the show. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has finally arrived. You know, I've been doing lots of videos. In fact, this video, not counting the teasers, would be my technically 82nd video that I've done a full show on. 87th if you count them all together. And there has been one prevailing topic that has popped up among my cohorts that helped me come up with ideas for this show. And there's only one subject they all want to hear about. My general opinion of a certain company in financial straits. And no, we're not talking about THQ, God rest their souls, or Nintendo for their stupid Japanese-centric we're better than now, holy crap, we're, we're fucking gods complex. No, I'm talking about the other one. And it's not the billion dollar PC conglomerate either that just moonlights as a video game console maker. No, I'm talking the other one, Sony. You see, for full disclosure, I was a Sony fan for 10 years, owning both a PlayStation 1 and a PlayStation 2. God knows how far that fucking got me. Yeah, it got me got me through the tough times, reunited me with Mega Man, introduced me to Ratchet and Clank and other games. But over the last seven years, Sony has taken a rapid decline in into the muddy shit skid. Sony's lifespan over this last console cycle is so bad, it's like the Lord Tensai storyline. Or how bad Fane Dango's new jacket looks. It's just been horrible. And sorry, Brony fans, but Sony's lifespan over the last seven years is as bad as Rarity's writing. Or what she, what she thinks generosity is. It's been non-existent. So therefore, over the next few, few minutes, seconds, seconds, I will divulge the truth. Where Sony was, where Sony is, and why, oh why, should we care whether they have a future? This rant is so big, it might take two to do. <laughs> In fact, screw it, it will take two to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the rant you've all been waiting for. It's Sony time. Hope you have strong stomachs. So, how do we start the tale of Sony? Well, of course, I'm a positive person, so I'll speak about the positive stuff first. About the good things that Sony has done to benefit the industry. In fact, Sony's video game history starts around 1994. You see, Nintendo was planning to make a CD drive attachment similar to the Sega CD. And they wanted Sony's help in order to make it. The idea was then called the PlayStation. And it was going to have high res 32-bit graphics for 
each of its games. Thus, the Super Nintendo would not have to be replaced for a long time in the cycle. An actual smart plan by Nintendo and Sony was more than happy to bump out their brand new CD-ROMs ROMs to an e eager public. Plus, also get their feet wet in the video game industry. But just before these two, these two romantic, romantic sons of bitches decided to hit the altar and get married, well, the rug was pulled underneath Sony's eyeballs, and Nintendo signed a shadow deal, Circa Mori Show, with the company Philips. Philips decided. Philips decided to make a console of their own using Nintendo properties called the CDI. Meanwhile, Sony was left in left in the altar like most black bitches if I ever were to date them. And Sony, as the story story says, just simply said the two words, "Do it." With that in a bright mind of Kazurai behind it, they created the first PlayStation, the first 32-bit CD-based gaming console. And, at a pretty steep at the time price point, it was really up to the games to sell it. But, Sony had, had the edge of it also being a CD player, the first multimedia thing of its kind. A lot of people used it at first for a CD player, but when cool games like Crash Bandicoot, Twisted Metal, Spyro the Dragon, and the first Resident Evil games started coming out, out a lot of people noticed that it was a good game machine, and third-party publishers also jumped on board. Capcom gave them gave them, of course, on top of Resident Evil, the Mega Man franchise, while Square Enix decided to bring their RPG powerhouse Final Fantasy to the masses. That selection would undoubtedly change RPG's course of history in America. With the success of Final Fantasy VII, RPGs of the Japanese making Finally, it landfall like a hurricane. But also on top of that, games like Madden, NBA Live, and others flourished under under the new platform. Sony, Sony had, Sony was looking like it was going to be be a force to be reckoned with, and Lord was it, even stopping Nintendo's vaunted. Ultra 64, also known as the Nintendo 64, off of its tracks. Due to the N64's lack of third-party development, Sony, Sony won the day and beat Nintendo's more powerful behemoth. Even when Sega came out with the Sega Saturn, with its lack of games and heavy price point, PlayStation 1 won the fifth console generation pretty handedly handedly and put it on a guillotine chokehold. That seemed like Sony in the next generation was only going to tighten something that they inevitably did when in when in two thousand they announced the PlayStation two, a DVD based DVD-based gaming powerhouse. Using the backwards capability feature of playing PS1 games at a higher res quality and and the DVD player which in Japan became a must own, the PlayStation 2 practically dominated the industry for 11 years, giving birth to such franchises as Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Ratchet and Clank, continuing success through Gran Turismo, Metal Gear made their high their high res debut there, and even series like Silent Hill, and yes, even my beloved Mega Man, 
and ultimately Resident Evil all made contributions and all made significant jumps in quality due to the PS2. In fact, the PS2 still holds the record as the highest selling console of all time. No matter what version you bought of it, the fat version or the slim one. Yes, the price point at $300 at the beginning was a pain in the neck, but it was $300 you, you would pay for. It's only when you bought the extra peripherals, something that would become one of Sony's Achilles heels, that things got, got more and more, more and more expensive. But... Other than that, Sony's high marketing budget, and trust me, in the PS2 era, they had commercials every five seconds for any game you could imagine. Com combine that with good game quality, the trustworthiness of the PlayStation brand, an easy controller, an even easier interface, and, well, what you got is... Practically a Scrooge McDuck money pit. Sony was floating in it. And even when they created the PlayStation Portable, a vastly underrated but vastly more powerful portable console than anything Nintendo has come out with in ages, even that succeeded beyond leaps and bounds, introducing gamers to games like the Persona series, which I am. I'm a fan of, look at my Persona 4 review for proof of, proof of that, and by the way, it's the arena version, but do yourself a favor and play Persona 3, by the way. By the way, and also miniature versions of their hit franchises, also great remixes like the Draco X Chronicles and Mega Man Powered Up upon others, and the PlayStation Portable, although for its lack of two analog sticks and a, and a battery life that was good and fantastic and acceptable with its high-res screen, and Sony could seemingly do no wrong. Due to the success of the PlayStation brand, when they were able to introduce introduce the Viva, Viva laptop line that started making money. They were able to revital, revitalize their TV market. Shoot, their TVs, TV studio started pumping out hits. PlayStation was practically everywhere. And it seemed going into the next console cycle at the beginning of 2006 and 2007 that Sony was just going to railroad their ass through another console generation. Little did I or any Sony fanboy know that their loyalty was about to get ripped from them. Their testicles were about to be re removed from, from their body, kicked on, and then handed right back to them at an overly exuberant price. In part two of this rant, here comes the ugly stuff. As Sony starts making monumental mistakes after mistake after mistake. And what Sony needs to do to avoid hitting bankruptcy as the seventh console generation begins. Told you, Sony fans. I'd only play nice for a little bit.